Namaste. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. We have one of these. One of those. Yes, this is your father. Welcome in one of those. This is Cafe Melange. We know it all. We have to tell us your uncle. She does. And so, again, it's kind of like a, a, a talk at this point. Um, and we got the top of the end. Uh, and this one is like a uh, a basic one on one course. Uno, simply uno course. Um, about basic concepts of uh, Memoje, pluralism, the earth, um, civilization as a as a foundation to understand, study, um, evaluate uh, history, uh, contemporary society, in addition to religion, philosophy, all that, economics, politics, all that. So these are like basic concepts. Um, and I referenced some of this previously, but it seems beneficial to just do it um, uh, succinctly um, and directly as just a, as an intro kind of term. So with that they said, also that le less than half an hour to do this story. So I'm not gonna that. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll recite a list of the concepts uh, and then give a, um, give a description of each one. So the list of concepts, one is uh, among these areas of civilization, and there are those is uh, ethical group of uh, ethnic groups. Uh, numero tres is languages. Numero cuatro is uh, the evolution of human religion. Um, that might be a charged uh, name, but the consideration, I'll try to explain it further. Um, Numero cinco is uh, the uh, calendars of the religions. Uh, and then numero seis is rivers. Let's wash it down. So, here we go. First one, very simple. I mentioned this before. Uh, areas of civilization. There's cinco areas of civilization. Um, basically, we've got the Mediterranean Sea and the land that is adjacent uh, generally uh, to the uh, to the Mediterranean Sea, that is Mediterranean. Um, to the north of that is Europe, to the east of that is Asia, to the south of that is Africa, and to the west of that is the Western Hemisphere, aka Taino Terrain. Um, Taino is the name of the indigenous people that Christopher Columbus first encountered when traveling to the Western Hemisphere. So that name is uh, referenced or utilized in honor of the native brethren um, accordingly, uh, recognizing that there's, there's a, an absence of a, a, a pan-indigenous term for the Western Hemisphere uh, for, the, for the consideration of um, uh, worldwide, earthwide um, study of, of human civilization or, or, or life, of particular civilization. Um, so anyways, time will turn it. It is. Um, those are the five areas. Plain and simple, that's it, geography, straight up. Um, so, we go on to number of those, the second joint, which is, didn't do no lotion today either, I noticed that. Um, number of those is uh, ethnic groups. So, there's siete, do it, siete ethnic groups. Um, and uh, the ethnic categories, the ethnic group categories, basically um, coincide with the, the same uh, areas of civilization categories with obviously two distinctions. Uh, there are two subgroupings or, or I don't want to say divisions, but distinctions um, amongst the, the, um, uh, the ethnic groups based on geography. So uh, we begin in, in Asia, there's a, there's a, a, a distinction uh, between East Asia and South Asia. Um, and all of this is very arguable in this there's not there's not just an absolute correct way of, of doing whatever or a methodology but uh, this is just the explanation so first of all large geographic area comparatively speaking compared to all the other geographic uh, places um with a large population uh that warrants further um, uh, um specificity when when identifying categories um, but then also there's a considerable, there's a, there's a fair dis fairly distinct uh, phenotype uh, that can be observed um, within, that, um, within that area of Asia. 
so South Asia and East Asia, it's plain and simple. Um, and we can look at the Himalayas generally as like a, as a, uh, uh, a geographic um, marker. Uh, trying to find another word other than boundary or border because that's a charged word amongst you know, melange. Um, but we can say potato, potato. That that's what it is. So, anyways, that's that's the one division. So, or the one distinction. Uh, the other distinction is in Mediterranean. Um, all of Mediterranean is categorized for the purposes of this um, foundational conceptual, this conceptual foundation as an ethnic group, um, Arabs, Jews, Semites, Persian, Greek, Italiano, um, with one exception, uh, that being of Iberian, uh, Latino, because of the considerable diaspora um, that um, the Latino um, population of Lat our Latino brethren maintain on Earth, particularly through migration and additionally uh, into the Western Hemisphere and further. So. Uh, because of that, um, a considerable um, uh, uh, presence uh, through through centuries, um, there's a certain uh, legitimacy in, 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 in uh, having a distinct uh, ethnic category for uh, Iberian or Latino, uh, distinct from the, the, the aggregate group of Mediterranean. So that being said, those are the two additional uh, things. So to sum up these siete, actually there's seven, seven plus one. Uh, to, to sum up these uh, siete um, ethnic group categories, um, there's Europe, East Asia, South Asia, um, Mediterranean, Africa, Iberia or Latino, Latina, and then native Western hemisphere. Um, the eighth or the plus one category is Melange. Because uh, it's a distinct uh, ethnic uh, uh, categorization and, and experience and heritage, um, and one might argue that Latino might can easily, uh, as I as I just described it, might easily fit within the category of Malinche. That's arguable, and that might be more for discussion. But at the moment, it's siete plus one, and those are the siete plus uno. Uh, so on to the next topic, numero tres, uh, languages. So uh -huh, here we get again further into the some further specificity. There are nueve languages, uh, and again it's, it's nueve plus uno, um, but nueve basic languages. So the language groups, and we, we refer to these as language linguistic clans. Um, uh, so the linguistic clans are groupings or, or families or however you want to, whatever term you like, you like for that. Again, all are, are coincide with the same ethnic uh, groups that I just mentioned. Um, I can remember the distinctions are. Um, well, what I'm going to do is go into the geography and it may, it may uh, emerge itself mo most readily in that process. I know one is um, pertains to European. Um, so we'll see. All right, here we go. So um, the the, um, the linguistic clans uh, from the east uh, continuing what. Uh, include um, from East Asia, uh, uh, Chinese, uh, and, and the Chinese family group. And it's, this is somewhat of a misnomer to call, call it all the Chinese, but um, because many of these Asian languages are uh, built from Chinese characters, um, there's that, that affiliation. Um, so that's that's one classification. Um, another kind of classification is Sanskrit Desi based um, of South Asia. Um, another one is I am going to have to reach up first my notes. I 
couldn't like fumble around it, but just for the sake of being concise and clear, as a foundation, I think, um, is beneficial just to be clear. I'm going to keep it on here because I still don't see it. I see it, but I don't see it. Um, so continuing westward, um, there is uh, Semitic, Arab, and Persian. So again, the same uh, ethnic uh, cluster uh, pertains to the linguistic cluster as well. Uh, that includes Hebrew, Arabic, Persian, uh, and additionally. Um, so that's, um, that's the third linguistic group. The fourth linguistic group is greco cyrillic uh, So this pertains to um, uh, Cyrillic base, which is a different alphabet uh, than, it's, it's a distinct alphabet from uh, Arab and, Arabic and Greek, or excuse me, Arabic and Hebrew, uh, and even Latin. Even though they're closely related, um, but it's also connected with um, uh, Russian uh, and addition. So, it is it, for, for those purposes, and particularly considering uh, the breadth of uh, Russia, uh, it is a, a distinct uh, linguistic clan in and of itself. So, that's number uh, four. Going south, we have Amark and African. So, basically, Amark is one of the few. Uh, indigenous African writing systems. And so um, it's referenced as the a focal point for the African uh, linguistic clan. Um, but it includes an, uh, connection, even though the African language is a huge diaspora with many distinctions initially, but for the purposes of uh, 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 literary study, and additionally, that's the, that's the manner in which it's categorized. Um, so that's more simple. The Rosace is uh -huh. that's why okay. I wonder why I had difficulty. Um, so numero six is uh, um, Germanic. So Germanic includes uh, again um, Germanic includes uh, Deutsch, it includes uh, Svensk uh, uh, and Dansk and um, uh, English uh, and uh, additional linguistic uh, systems that are closely related uh, to Germanic, even if other than attributed to being derived directly from Germanic. So uh, basically Northern Europe, um, uh, that's another uh, linguistic clan. Numero, I think that's numero six. Uh, numero siete is Latin, uh, Latin-based. Um, Latin-based uh, language, so that includes Latin itself, but it also includes Francais and um, Espanol and Portuguese um, uh, and uh, Italiano and additionally. So um, it's a little bit of a, um, a blending. It's a, a, a same form directly along the same uh, categorization of the ethnic uh, categories, but it, it's very similar. And that's this nature of, of uh, human civilization and evolution as well. So. But that's the, that's the other category, uh, linguistic clan. Um, so that's numero siete. Numero ocho is uh, uh, native. Uh, so that, that includes, again, the Western Hemisphere. And um, again, huge dis distinctions uh, from, from Inuit to uh, uh, Guarani um, and, and Mayan and Aztec and Inca. Uh, and Lakota and Navajo and Seminole are all very distinct uh, um, languages and writing systems. Uh, but in terms, again, of study uh, and additionally of understanding the aggregate of civilization, that's, it's, it's, a, it's one category. So that's numero ocho. Um, and then numero nueve is the uh, again, because um, as language itself is, is an evolving phenomena and it's continually. Um, uh, uh, changing, uh, uh, blending, uh, as, as words, concepts, principles are exchanged between cultures, uh, new words are formed and additionally new languages are formed. Uh, and so that's part of the uh, experience of knowledge as well.
So those are the categories. Uh, East Asian, again, uh, the Chinese include Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Hangul, um, Vietnamese, uh, even uh, effectively Thai, even though it, there's a, a distinct writing system. Um, uh, and additionally, so, but then, then that's where we get into the second category of um, uh, Desi or Indian uh, Sanskrit uh, related uh, languages, uh, all the different, again, languages and dialects additionally in India and South Asia. Uh, third category is uh, Arabic, Semitic, um, Persian, um, but the uh, languages emerging from the Middle East. Um, next category is uh, Greco, Cyrillic, Russian. Um, and the next category is Amharic and African languages. Next category is uh, Latino, uh, Latino uh, Latin based languages. Uh, next category is uh, uh, Northern European Germanic languages. Uh, next category is native, Western hemisphere. And then the final category is uh, Menoje. And I didn't do it in the same exact order in that summation as I did in the explanation, but it's the same joints. Um, so there it is. Those are the ling linguistic groups. So that gives us some introduction in terms of what we're dealing with, in terms of geography, in terms of people, in terms of communication, in terms of right there, we're already talking about migration. We're talking about like settlements. We're talking about studies. We're talking about learning. We're talking about rules and principles and things that shape um, societies uh, for, for thousands of years. Uh, just by even just identifying those categories, um, and uh, that's that's part of this, uh, establishing the foundation. I got about ten minutes at this point, uh, a little bit over that. So, yes, we need those. Um, so then we get into haha, the evolution of human religion, uh, and again, the, the notion of evolution of human religion isn't is it doesn't isn't meant to to uh, to connote or proclaim like. The, the advancement or the improvement or, or or whatever it's just a matter of like the progression of, of the development and development itself is a charged word as it's utilized in the UN edition but uh as in terms of like going from something that's immature into something that's a full grown or whatever but that's not what's being applied here it's just a matter of like watching the track the the, the progression of the religion um without making any kind of uh, normative claims about any of the religions it's just a matter of saying this is what it is. So here we go. This is how it works. There are basically two plus one categories of religion. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to sum this up in like five minutes. Um, obviously, there are different creation stories and, and explanations of where humanity is derived and where the different groups are derived in addition. So at some point, people emerge, historic figures, prophets, ancestors, whose names we know today, uh, emerge and, and establish a, uh, a foundation of, um, of beliefs, of principles, of behavior, of organizing, of society that continue to this day. Um, and there are basically two lineages, like I mentioned. Uh, there's, there's that that emerges from India uh, with the Rishis and um, with uh, the, the tradition of the Indus Valley, often referred to as Hinduism, but there's not just any one, really one word that categorizes fully the, the, the belief system, but that's just the geography. That's one area um, um, of, of brand, a branch um, of, of human religion. And then another branch is Abraham, uh, from uh, Mesopotamia towards uh, uh, Israel. Uh, otherwise known as Palestine, uh, and known by many names that are still contended to this day. But anyways, that's, those are the two branches. Um, and those emerged during uh, um, comparatively similar uh, periods of human civilization, uh, human existence. And again, like I said, there's an establishment of like laws of how to behave. And it, they're like, they're righteous laws, they're effective laws, because they continue to exist to this day. People still practice things like tough. So obviously there's something happening with this. Um, and there's a hierarchy that's, a, that's established. Um, and, and people fit along the, along the, the totem pole, so to speak. And that's, a, that's a bit of a, an appropriate uh, euphemism. But anyways, um, and that being said, uh, after a certain period, uh, there's a certain amount of latency 
a certain amount of um, lackadaisicalness or whatever else. Um, and uh, eventually, within both of these strands, there emerges um, a, um, uh, a messenger, a prophetic figure. Um, people refer to it as uh, Messiah, as uh, uh, awakened ones, uh, however one wants to describe it. There's a persona, there's a personage that emerges in each of these, uh, in each of these experiences that communicate a very similar message of transformation, of, of calling out society and say, hey, things are corrupt, it needs to change, and we need to undo all this hierarchy and everything else like that, and like, do away with that. Um, and that's the Buddha, and that is Jesus. Uh, the Buddha emerges uh, within India um, a, a few centuries before Jesus emerges um, in Israel. Um, but the message uh, and the effect are very similar. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's appropriate to recognize like the similarity between the two um, and, and what it's responding to and what it establishes. And so um, both also teach very fundamentally a, a discipline of asceticism, uh, of withdrawing from society, being celibate, um, and, and living a beggar's life, of living off of just donations and, and offerings. Uh, and so it's radically different than the hierarchy and the motivations that were, were that were getting people or uh, in influencing people to do work uh, and contribute to society. Um, and so that's what happens. Um, uh, then uh, a number of centuries later, uh, in, in, in the geographic uh, median between India and Israel, uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, the Prophet Muhammad Salah Alaihi Salah. Salah wa salam. I'm working on it. Peace and blessings be upon it. Uh, emerges and teaches a message of again reformation, transformation, awakening, enlightenment, righteousness amidst corruption. Um, and what's interesting to note is that um, rather than the methodology for practicing or for instituting that that righteousness being some form of asceticism that removes oneself from society. It's a matter of being a householder, ha living a family life, I'm running late on time, Running, having a family life, being married, having children, um, but with, with a certain set of, of principles accordingly that, it, that are distinct from what are originally established by uh, Abraham and the tradition of Israel and, is in, in, and established through the Rishis and the laws of Manu and additionally within India. Uh, and so it's establishing a, a, a distinct um, societal, societal hierarchy uh, with, with different uh, methodologies of, of, um, uh, of leadership um, and influence. Uh, and that merges again in the ge geographic middle uh, between India and Israel. Um, and that continues on for um, to, to this day. Um, what is also interesting to note is that um, I mentioned there being a plus one category for, for human religions. Uh, and so I paused on, on, on the chronology timeline of this joint um, to, to explain the plus one. The plus one is basically uh, native. Um, and one can say like additional categories of, 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 of religion, that's a little bit of a uh, dismissive. Um, but, and so that's, that's not the intention, but particularly native um, and, and, and somewhat additional. Um, and so uh, it's appropriate to be mindful of that uh, in the context of all of this. Um, and also, in that plus one includes another strand that emerges in the geographic middle or the geographic mean between India and Israel and Persia, which is uh, Zarathustra, um, who teaches, um, again, a, a methodology of uh, society, religion, law, um, that is geographically and arguably theologically um, within the median between Israel and India. Um, and that is of note as we recognize the geography of uh, the emergence of Islam. Um, and continually, so that being said, I'll, I'll continue on with the chronology. After, um, after the emergence of Islam, a number of centuries later, um, there, there happened, there occurs another, um, 
another awakening or another um, spiritual or religious uh, birth in human civilization. Again, in the East and the West, uh, so to speak. In the East, there is the emergence of Sikhism, um, which responds to the experience of uh, all the religious traditions that are that are had within India uh, to that point. Uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, um, the the migration of, of Christians and in, in, um, in children of Israel into, into, to, uh, into India as well. Um, but with, with all that experience, um, the the tradition of Sikh uh, emerges that that uh, communicates a message of reconciliation amongst all these chains or amongst all these uh, distinctions, um, and. Uh, Shares a message of, of effective pluralism um, amidst that, including that's epitomized within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Um, so that, that emerges in India. And then a few centuries later, um, within Persia, which is a little bit further to the west, uh, a, a similar message is shared uh, within, uh, within Persia um, and the emergence of the Bab and his, his successor, um, who is the, the foundation of the faith of Baha'i. Um, Baha'u'llah is his name, um, and who also teaches the message of reconciliation um, and accepts all the different um, uh, prophets and um, uh, what is what are referred to as manifestations um, as true and legitimate uh, and teaches the message of the oneness of humanity. Uh, and so it's interesting to see, it's, it's notable, it's appropriate to recognize like these, these patterns and in, 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 uh, these teachings and, and progression. Um, and so, again, those 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 phenomena emerging uh, within the middle of, in, of Israel and and uh, India. So, uh, that is where things continue. Uh, as I mentioned, native is is around for time immemorial through this day, um, and is and experiences ebbs and flows amidst its relationship with, um, with the established, uh, the, the, the formal conventional religions of, um, of world society um, and maintaining legitimate um, uh, uh, truth and insight and, and wisdom uh, that, that's beneficial uh, for uh, humanity as well. Um, so, that's kind of like a, a summation of the progression of, of human religion uh, over the past few thousand years. Um, there, there are additional elements to like emphasize, but I'm leaving it at that because of the time constraints. I get to get into the other points of the, um, the calendars and then uh, the rivers. So I plan to return. Uh, really, I'll be here a little bit later and, and finish up the recording of this joint. Um, so, uh, I will just address the, the those two remaining topics. Um, calendars, there are twelve calendars, those say calendars, uh, that we that we work with um, in, in the institutions that work with Sun Ashram and additionally, um, that emerge from each of these different traditions that I mentioned, that I just mentioned. Uh, one that I didn't mention by name specifically is Jain tradition, uh, that also actually emerges uh, a little bit uh, along the same period of the Buddha uh, with a similar message, um, a little bit of a different methodology. Um, um, but all, all the other ones I mentioned have a distinct calendar uh, and rituals that are that are observed according to that calendar, even me the methodology and how the calendar is maintained. So that's what I plan to, to address next. And then the rivers is just basically a listing of, I think it's 30 uno, 31 rivers, the main rivers of, of Earth, um, as just a, a geographic uh, uh, reference, a uh, frame of reference uh, to understanding um, the emergence of, of human civilizations, cities, uh, empires, and additionally, recognizing how significant rivers are in that experience. So, with that being said, you know, pause this for the moment and, and bounce. Namaste, Assalamu Alaikum, Shalom, Zaiden, Adios, Tejavos, Asmi, Khalid, Fred, One Love, Peace.